Well, it's a fantastic question. Um, the only problem is there's more than one way to answer this. So I'll try to break it down. First of all, yes, there's the ability to trigger them. The question is how you want to trigger them. Uh, you can do things like uh, SQL triggers and have them trigger when a new insert is made, or you can run a SQL job, or we can go ahead and do this in PowerShell. And I think we're gonna go with the PowerShell option. So let's go ahead and make a demo. So right off the bat, the first thing we're gonna do is we need to create our demo information. So let's create a demo database easy enough. We'll create a demo table, which should also be easy enough. And we're going to insert a couple of records just so that we have something to work with. Um, in this case, I'm going to work with a set of records that are only four, but obviously there could be more, but I, I figured that's enough for what we're doing here. So what we're doing is creating a couple of paths and directories in a database and we're going to check using the where in this case uh, expiry date so we created four records three show because i'm saying get where date is less than current date if i do equal well none of them equal current date yeah, i can do not equal to and that should return everything because none of them are equal to the current date so we have a simple syntax there and i'm going to work with where date is equal to or less than current day. So we're just gonna say, you know, records older than current date. So if we're using an expiry date, if it's in the future, then it hasn't happened yet. Now, moving over to the PowerShell example, first thing we've gotta do is actually get our data out of the database. Um, we're also gonna create a couple of demo files here so that we have something to work with. So, Straight off, uh, we have our demo files. We have four of them equal to the number of records and location of the records that we have in our database. So I'm gonna use the PowerShell um, SQL client uh, net library. I use the SQL client simply because it's available on every machine, or at least every Windows machine. So we're gonna create a connection. We're gonna open the connection. We're gonna export it. And you can see I've wrapped it already in a try and catch this prove that the data is there. So we're just gonna go ahead and run that. As you can see, we get spat an output that says, hey, these are the paths, these are expiry dates. So that's the content from our query. So that's now available as a variable within our PowerShell. So this is technically an array because it's multiple items. So you know, not to get confused too much there. Now, obviously, that we've got this information, what we now want to do is work with it. So we can see that we do have the table data. Now I'm gonna just say, okay, for each row in our table, so it's again, it's an array, we can say, I'm gonna write removing. Now I've, as you can see, hashed out the actual removing step because I don't want to delete it just yet. I just wanna show you the output from that. So this is showing us, these are the files that I would want to remove or I'm going to remove if I run the rest. Now, that's only one part of it, and that would work fine if we just wanted to remove the files. But since we're it's going to say we want to run this probably more than once, um, we want to update the database, because otherwise we're going to try and remove files that are no longer there. And that can be a, a pretty major issue. So I'm just going to format this text a little bit, because it's not pasted well, and I've got a couple of extra spaces that I don't want. And we're just going to say that this is the update um, SQL data. Now, if we don't update the database, this next run will error because files don't exist and it's already done the removal, etc., etc. You can see we have the our, our SQL syntax that says delete from database where path equals to what we're deleting effectively in the previous line. We're just doing a, a capture on the output as well. So we're saying write warning unable to delete file in case there's an error. That might not be true, it might be that the database is down, but you know that, that would be a bit more complicated error handling. So we run it and three out of the four files have disappeared. And if we also check here, we can see that nothing matches. We change it to a different, so we, we just see what's left. We have one entry, which equals the file that was not deleted. So, so far all good, right? 
So let's insert the data again and basically recreate our test environment so that we can do this one more time. But now we're going to go for the complexity of saying, let's create our test steps plus a loop. So what we're going to do is instead of running it just the once that we did manually, let's run it in an automated way. So we'll create a, a nice little loop that will run through the whole script repeatedly. So now we've got our records, we have our files. So let's go ahead and update our script a little bit. So it's a pretty straightforward update so far. We'll get rid of the, the show data because we don't need that. And instead of starting with our try, let's start with a, you know what, I'm just gonna format this a little better. I, I do hate it when formatting's a little funky. And here we go, uh, we'll put a while and we say true. And then we get open bracket because we've got to start. So everything now inside of this, and we've got to put an end somewhere here. So we've got to say, okay, we put a, an end at the end here. And I like to indent it correctly so that we know where it begins and ends. And I can do the proper collapse if needed. And I'm also gonna put a here a, a right warning and the reason we're writing warning is we should never finish the loop so if the loop finishes i want to write an error message out saying hey it finished so this is the end of my loop you can do other things you can create windows events and other stuff but um, just for the purposes of this demo that's more than good enough so what it'll do now is running an infinite loop but we don't want it to run like continuously so let's put a little bit of a delay in here i'm going to say start sleep and say 60 seconds so that it runs once a minute you could have it run less than that but you know let, let's say 60 seconds is fine and if i go ahead and run the script since i've removed the output there's no output happening so it's just running in the background cycling through but if i go ahead and i go to let's say our database or our files what we should see is that it's completed so okay it's deleted so it's just running in our loop here continuously going hey do i have new database do i have new so let's check the output so first of all let's do a quick run there's no records in the database and if we check our file system and trust me i haven't been cheating there's only one file left which is the one that doesn't match our filter so that's now running basically continuously what you can also do is let's say update the table and remove the, that remaining record the last one now just because this is going to be relatively quick and i do mean incredibly quick once it starts running um, because we're only going to have maximum a minute for it to do a complete cycle here Let's just keep on screen what it is that we're going to delete. So we're just going to put our, our data over here and we're just going to move this other window out of the way so that we can keep a track of what happens when we actually run this whole uh, statement. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. You see two rows are affected. You see we have our file here. Now, depending on where we are on that whole cycle of a minute, it could be an immediate deletion. It could be in a couple of seconds because we don't know where we are. We could be at 55 seconds or 59 seconds where we ran it. It could be at one second, but we do know that it is looping around. So at some point that file is going to disappear along with the two records. And I say two records because remember there was four records inserted the second time and we didn't delete the first record. And there we go, which means one of them will error because the files already deleted. And there we go. So we, we know that it ran and we also know that it ran through the second item as well because we updated both of them. Now, if I'd only updated one record, there wouldn't be the error message, but it would error later once it reaches the expiry time because there's no file 